Okay, so like I said, we only got really three more teaching classes left. This today we'll cover first, second Peter, uh, Jude. Next week we'll look at first, second, and third John, and then after that it's just Revelation, and then we'll have the big test. So, did you guys go through on James and look at the Sermon on the Mount and kind of see how that fits together and how some people look at it? Some of them were kind of stretching it, but I could see the ties. Yeah. Some of them were really close, and yeah, some of them kind of look like they were stretching it a little bit, but you can kind of see um, just James is writing how... You know, it was kind of influenced by it, and you can tell that just growing up around Jesus, and th so those would have been some of the things he heard. And you can also see that uh, he was obviously versed in, you know, as far as like parables go, and you know, so you can see that it's a lot of good application that we can apply to our lives. And then I'm sure you guys seen how there wasn't a whole lot of uh, doctrine in it, mostly just application and how we should be living and. Um, so did anybody get anything in James that just really stuck out to them when you guys were going through it? Well, I just, the chapter 5, I was just like, I don't ever think I've read something in the New Testament. Chapter 5? It was just intense about the rich and, you know, one in the poor. So. Yeah. Because you should see my closet is sinful. <laughs> 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 I know. You know what? The other day it was. You guys know Peter, uh, the home. He was, he's homeless. Yeah, yeah. He always comes in wearing the camouflage. Well, uh, he got a job, and um, well, he's been. We've been giving him rides to there until he's able to get his own place and get his own. You know, get on his feet. But last week, I gave him a ride because he had to go to. Uh, to the union hall over there for the carpenters and then I had to take him to go get some shoes and then you know afterwards I felt so bad because it's you know where do you want me to drop you off and you know he's like oh just drop me off near the, the building I found a good place where I can sleep you know and you kind of feel so bad because you read something like James and it's like you know you tell a brother stay warm and be full yeah. and, and then you just you have it okay see you later I know so I mean it's hard because especially here in Albuquerque you just see so so much of that and it's like right. you know you can't help everybody but what do you what do you do so yeah definitely James is just one of those ones that really challenges you that book is just Yeah. Is that the ones that, that, that are just living for themselves? And, and because people do have money and they give to the church or give, you know. Yeah, and that's where, you know, when Timothy it says it's the love of money that's the root of all evil, it's not having money because money is a tool. It's how do you use the tools that God has given you. So. For yourself, huh? Yeah. We were. Was anybody here for. Uh, Mindy's Honduras mission night? Yeah. You were here? I was here. Well, you know, she was talking about the, the kids there and how they just started a school at the, the dump. It's, uh, do you guys remember back in the day when you, would take, when you would take your garbage to the dump and it was just on the landfill and you just threw it on the floor? And the, well, that's kind of the way that their dumps are there in Honduras. And people, they make their little makeshift houses around the, the outside of, this, uh, of the dump, whatever they can find in there, if they can find cans or they can find bottles. And they go and they recycle them, you know, just to get whatever they can. And... Uh, she told him, she was telling me, I, she told me like before that, she didn't mention it during the, the meeting, but she was telling me that there's uh, four little kids that are living inside of this dump that don't have parents. Their parents, they don't know what happened to them, but 
the oldest one is eight years old, and he's taking care of the, of his three brothers and sisters. Well, they kind of put together like a kind of a fair to try and trap these kids to get them to go in because the authorities are they're trying to catch these kids, but they keep you know they're trying to get away. They don't want to be captured by the authorities. Captured. So. They they took them in and then they caught two of them. They caught the two youngest ones. One of them, a little girl, I forget the ages, but you know she looks like she's about this tall. And then a little tiny boy who looks like he's like two years old. Tiny little boy, cute little pictures. If you see her, ask her to show you the pictures. But uh, they captured two of them and they took them to the orphanage. So she has these two. She has pictures of when they brought them in the day that they brought them from the orphanage, you know, they're all dirty and they're scared and, you know, because they don't know what's going to happen to them now. They just know they were, they were caught by the authorities. They've been running from them for who knows how long. But uh, she has pictures after a week of them being there. And there's one picture in particular that's of the little girl. And she has these other two little girls that are about her same age. And she has her arms wrapped around both of them. And she's wearing, you know, what looks like a new dress. And she has this huge smile on her face. And uh, I told her, man, that just reminds me of us. You know, we were in the world and we were running away from God. And, you know, as our authority, we did not want to be cleaned up. We just wanted to live out there. And then finally God gets a hold of us cleans us up, puts us in a brand new family, and it's like, man, God just wants so much better for us. And you see the same thing happening like on a smaller scale with these kids that are uh, in this uh, dump. But, yeah, but one of the things that, uh, you know, you look at these kids, and, you know, they didn't choose the situation that they're in. They didn't choose to be born into a third world country. They didn't choose to have to live in this dump. You know, that's just the hand that they were dealt. And then you look at us, born in the United States, and you see how much we have. And, you know, we didn't choose, we didn't earn to be born where we're at. We were blessed. And now it's like, what are we going to do with the blessing that we've been given? You know, and that's the kind of thing that to me is kind of scary because it's like, man, God has given us so much to live where we're living, and what do we do with it? You know, so. It's kind of like I was just, the day I was growing up, Paul, you know what I am? I didn't deserve God's grace. And then you know, sometimes I didn't think we did. You know? Mm hmm. Because we're better, you know, we deserve it more, we think we're different. Paul would really do that because he was a persecutor. Yep. Everything we have is a blessing and a gift. And James talks about that too. Everything we have is a gift that comes down from the Father of Lights. So, you know, perspective. So that's James. James is just a really rough letter. Talks about the same thing about, you know, the Bible, you know, the Word of God being a mirror. You know, you look into it and you see what you're supposed to look like. And if you turn away and you go living in the world the same exact way without fixing what you see wrong in that mirror, that's like you getting up in the morning and looking and, you know, seeing eye mocos and you just look and you're like, oh, okay, and you just walk away and go out like that. You're not. You're going to clean yourself up. So if you do the same thing, you look in the, in the Word of God and you see, man, I'm a mess. And then you just walk away and you continue living a mess. You know what I mean? It's kind of the same thing. So it's like, man, that's crazy. So, James. Now we get into first and second Peter. Um, of course, we talked about James being the half brother of Jesus. Peter, we know Peter. He was uh, one of the twelve, one of the three in the inner circle. Um, he was a fisherman. So. Let's go ahead and just start from the, the beginning. So, it emphasizes making a difference in an unbelieving world by living right in a world gone wrong. And this is First, Second, Peter, and Jude. All three of these kind of hit the same thing. That's why they bunched them together. Um, in fact, when you go through the, the, the book, it kind of says that some of the people actually thought that Jude was kind of just rewriting in his own words Second Peter. So, it was... Uh, Calvin, no, it was actually Martin Luther that kind of made that statement that it looks like Jude kind of just 
Red Sack and Peter and kind of just put out his own letter, but not necessarily like copying it because there is no copyright when it comes to the Word of God, but just that to him and his point that that's what it kind of looked like. And then Calvin wrote that, no, he doesn't think that's what it is at all. He thinks, you know, Jude is just writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Either way, it's in the Scripture, so it's, it's Holy Spirit inspired. But um, all three of them, you're going to see kind of the same exact um, point that they're trying to make is making a difference in an unbelieving world by living right in a world gone wrong. So endure suffering and defend the faith. And of course, we kind of see that same thing when we look at Timothy. Remember Paul's writing to Timothy telling the same thing. So, you know, that's pretty much the whole concept of the whole entire gospel, especially during this time, all the persecution that they were going under. The same thing with James, you know, count it all joy when you fall into various trials because all this stuff was going on. Uh, when Peter's writing his account here, we remember Nero was the one who's in control in Rome and he, what he's doing to um, the Christians the persecution that's going on. So keep that in mind as you go through uh, First and Second Peter that there was a lot of persecution going on and it was nothing like we can even imagine in our own country today. So uh, the key verse, 4.12. And then the key, 4.12. And then the key word is uh, suffering, pathema, P-A-T-H-E-M-A. Is that for all three books? Nope, that is just for when we're going to have three key verses, three key words to remember this week. So this is just First Peter now. So the key verse is 412, uh, suffering. Uh, the author is Peter, but it was uh, dictated to Silas, and he tells us that in chapter 5, verse 12, that Silas pinned it. Um, the early Christian church accepted Peter as the author. Uh, later on, people started saying, well, that's kind of too polished of Greek for Peter to have written it. Um, a great explanation for that would have been uh, Silas, who was a Roman, he would have been, you know, he would have known Greek pretty well. So he could have just polished it up while he was writing it. But Peter wrote it, he, he dictated it to Silas, and Silas penned it. Kind of the same thing that you see with, you know, the Bible in general. He's the one who just wrote it. Oh, so it was his hand that, that, that wrote it. And, okay. yeah, and Peter just told him what to write. <clears throat> and, yeah, in the, chapter 5, verse 12, it, uh, he tells us that. Uh, the same way Mark is the one John Mark wrote the gospel right. according to Mark, but yet it was the account of uh, Peter that he told to him, and, and he, yeah, pretty similar. This one is more of a direct, write this down, and he wrote it down. Mark was more memory from what he heard. So um, Silas pinned it. Uh, it was written to the five Roman provinces in Asia Minor, so he was writing to Christian Jews. And we remember from the Acts study, Peter was the apostle to the Jews. Remember, uh, Acts chapters 1 through 12 records all of uh, what Peter did. And then 13 through the end of the book, 28, it talks about what Paul did. So Peter was known as the apostle to the Gentiles, even though he is the one who first gave the gospel to the, the Gentiles when he went to Cornelius exactly. So, but Peter was known for being the apostle to the Jews. Um, to the Jews, not Gentiles. To the Jews, not Gentiles. It was Paul to the Gentiles. So it's written to those provinces in the Northwest Asia Minor who were going through the serious trials and persecutions. Um, Peter reminds the readers that they are strangers and not temporary residents. And that's one of the things that Peter really stresses on is that you know, this isn't our permanent home. I'm sure you guys have seen the knot of this world on the back of people's cars. And, oh, yeah, what is it? N-O-T-W. Yeah, knot of this world, that's where they get it from, is from Peter. So he says, you know, this isn't our home. We're just strangers passing through. Uh, we are citizens of another country. 
So that's one of the things that Peter really stresses in First Peter. Um, but he says, even, even though that's the case, while we're here on this earth, we're still subject to human authority. So he's not undermining what Paul writes when Paul is saying, you know, we've got a government system and we've got to come under that government authority as long as, you know, it's not contradicting what the Word of God says. Peter's saying we, he's agreeing with that. We do have a duty to uphold the laws that we are under while we're here. Um, he goes on in uh, chapter 4 to talk about uh, the suffering, that we should expect it while we're here. And so Peter, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So Peter, um, so I remember like in Acts, that's when Peter was on bread, and then Acts, Paul and Barnabas started the journey, the first journey. So Peter stopped at that point, right? He didn't stop at that point oh. where just Luke just focuses on, oh. on Paul from that point on. So... Oh, okay. So, uh, they knew each other, right, Paul and Peter? <laughs> yeah, because remember, they even it talks about it in Acts 15, the Jerusalem Council. Yes. So while we're on this earth to expect uh, suffering, so we know Paul, uh, Peter, he was one of the inner three, right? How many times did Jesus mention that? You know, if they didn't accept me, they're not going to accept you. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. So Peter is a first-hand account, and he even talks about that, saying that he's seen the suffering of Christ. He's seen what happened. So he's saying, you know, we, sh we should expect the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, wraps it up with, live above our circumstances to make a difference in this world. So that's how he wraps up First Peter, the word, to make a difference. It's not about our circumstances. And it's kind of the same thing we see with the fruit of the Spirit. It's not about what, what uh, circumstance we're in, but it's about the joy and the, the hope that we have in Christ. So it's not about our circumstances. We're to make a difference in this world. Uh, Second Peter, key verse is 3.18, and the key word for that is knowledge, gnosis. And that is G-N-O-S-I-S. Are you sure it's gnosis? Gnosis. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say this. You know, back to First Peter. I was wondering, it seems like this little other passage on husbands and wives is stuck right in the middle of this thing. In chapter 3. Yeah. That's another way you're suffering in a marriage. And that's how you deal with it. Yeah, well, he definitely starts out before that in chapter... In the chapter, he's talking about coming under the authority in general, and then he breaks it down into every authority that there is. He says, you know, there's the government authority, then there's the, the, the authority between a master and a servant, and then there's the authority of a wife to her husband, and just kind of goes into that, so... Yep. And that definitely can be because it also tells us in Genesis that women are saved through the pains of childbirth. You know what I mean? So it could just be all the different trials. I mean, including marriage, the different areas. So, so then he talks about in uh, Second Peter. So uh, knowledge, gnosis, keyword. Author is, again, Peter. Uh, this one, he is writing from prison in Rome. And this is shortly before he's uh, beheaded. Written from prison in Rome? Yes. And he's writing to the same people. Mm -hmm. To the same people. To the, the five Roman provinces in Asia Minor. He said uh, he was beheaded? Yes. And I, I thought he was... Crucified upside down? Yeah. Yep. I don't know why this says that. I heard the same thing, that he was crucified upside down. This one says that he was there shortly before he was beheaded. So I heard the same thing. He was crucified upside down, that he said he wasn't worthy of being crucified. So, yeah. So let's just go with that. It's probably church tradition that that's what happened. So that's something we can definitely look into and then talk about next week. So... Yeah, because, I mean, there's different traditions on how, you know, with uh, 
John saying he was boiled and didn't die, and then they th threw him on the island of Patmos. And um, I've read certain other things that say that they don't know for sure that he was boiled in oil. And, you know, so, I mean, it is traditions, but usually they're pretty, pretty accurate. You can find it written in different uh, historians' texts. So I'll have to look into that one because, yeah, so he writes to the same five Roman provinces. So it's just a, a, a second letter written to the same people. So unlike Paul, where he writes different letters to different people, this one that Peter's writing, he's just writing to the same group of people. Yeah, and he's writing it to the churches in Asia Minor, which are be those churches that Paul would have gone through because he went and he established those churches in Asia Minor. So... Uh, Peter is the first to warn the church that the Lord's coming might be delayed. So, you know, Paul stresses on the uh, imminency of Jesus' return. He says, you know, be expecting him like he's coming any second. And Paul says that it might be a while before he returns. Uh, and he says the reason for that is, of course, the long-suffering of God giving time to repent. Not necessarily saying, uh, oh, Jesus might not be coming, so go ahead and, you know, have a good time, and then there'll be time to repent later. He's just saying, no, you're, it, might take, it might be not as soon as we're expecting, just because God wants as many people to repent as possible. So, Peter rebukes those who scoff at the idea of his coming. So, that's been going on since the very beginning. So, we see even... Peter making reference to people making fun of Christians for believing in a rapture, in a Jesus returning. And then Jude, a tiny little book right before Revelation. So the key verse in that one is just verse 3, <clears throat> just one chapter. Uh, the key word in there is content. Epigonozami, I don't know, E-P-A-G-O-N-I-Z-O-M-A-I, -I, and it'll be in the book. And this one is written by Jude, which was another half-brother of Jesus, but this would have been his little brother. This is almost like the Greek word in a... Ego, yeah. Like, I get agonized. I get yeah, contend. Exactly it's the same. Exactly yep, yeah, Jude, Jesus' little half brother. Do it is? Yep. So, written to Jewish Christians and. Uh, Jude is kind of a crazy book because he r makes references to other books that are not in the canon. So it's really interesting. Uh, Jude also talks about, you know, Satan and fighting over Moses' body. And so he gives us kind of some type of insight that, you know, we don't get in other parts of, of Scripture. Um, he mentions uh, verses uh, from a book called Enoch that's not inside of our scripture. So it's just, it's, it's an interesting book when you go through it. But uh, he's talking about false teachers. That's who he's addressing here. And uh, one of the things that we want to get from Jude, which is really important, is immorality leads to heresy. So they perverted Bible teachings to justify their immoral lifestyles. That's what was going on, and that's what Jude is addressing here. Can you say that again? Sorry. They perverted Bible teachings to justify their immoral lifestyles, and we still see that going on today. That's, if, that's probably one of the biggest things we see going on today. You know, they want to justify the way they're living, so they pervert the Bible teachings and try and, you know, say, well, the Bible doesn't really mean that, or... So for that, immorality leads to heresy. He says, written, he says, the recipients to those called, sanctified, and preserved. What? 
the recipients of Judah. Oh, to the Jewish Christians. Same thing? Mm-hmm. So Jude addresses the false teachers that were leading the church. Uh, he mentions the last days, and he could have been addressing all false teachers throughout all ages. So not just what was going on there. That goes for, you know, false teachers that are teaching the same things today, the same heresies. Uh, some of their... Uh, Attributes were ungodliness, turning the grace of God into lavaciousness. They denied Christ. They were fornicators. They despised authority. Uh, they defiled the flesh. They corrupt themselves like brute beasts. They were shepherds who only fed themselves. Uh, clouds without waters, trees without fruit, stormy waves foaming out their own shame, wandering stars in outer darkness, uh, murmurers, complainers, boastful, Boasters, lustful, mockers, self-seeking, uh, division causers. Uh, Jude also encourages believers to build themselves up, pray in the Holy Spirit, keep themselves in the love of God, and to look for His mercy. To have compassion, to save certain ones with fear, and he ends up with praise to God who will present the believers spotless to His presence. So, that's not necessarily important, I mean, it's important, but it's not necessarily important enough to where you have to write it down. It's not going to be like... But... Can you say it again? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 so... Yeah,